Hello YouTube friends, I've just reorganised the kitchen a little bit because of what I'm going to do this morning and I've tried the camera in about six different places uh, I'm sure I'll move you from there when I get started So um, I did that little video uh, the other day about the split when my friend Sue came and um, we split the uh, colony of bees into two and then she went away, we all had our fingers crossed, how was it going to work out? At the same time, at the very beginning of that video, I said that she actually uh, pointed out that I have I have this box of um, frames here that have capped honey on them that I can extract. So I'm going to extract the honey today. That's why I've emptied out the kitchen a bit. I've got my extractor down there. I've got my uh, settling tank here. And, uh, and my frames here. I've got everything I need. So I'm going to do that with you this morning. But I'm just going to talk about the bees for a minute. Because this, uh, this is going to be a, a catch up or a, uh, an explanation about what happened after that split that Sue and I did. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, um, I'll, uh, I'm not the world's best at putting in iCards, but I'll stick in an iCard now so that you can pop and watch that video about what Sue and I did with the bees that day. What was it? Last Thursday and today is Tuesday. So it's not even a week since we did that. And Sue's instructions when she left was, she said, you're probably going to get a swarm, at least one. Uh, so keep an eye open for a swarm. But if you don't get one, come back in a week's time and see what's happening in these two colonies. So that instruction, off she went and I was um, going to be doing that. But then on Sunday, uh, John and Anna popped round to see me and Anna, we were sitting in the kitchen and Anna said, it's a lovely day, why don't we go in the garden? So we went, went out in the garden. And John said, what are all those bees doing over there on that post? Now, I hadn't seen them. He saw them. And I had had a swarm. I'd had a swarm. And they'd settled not far from the colony that they'd come from and uh, settled on a post. Now, catching a swarm is uh, there's a definite way of doing it. And uh, the one other time that I've done it once before, the bees all settled on a branch that was around shoulder height, um, easy to catch. So all I did was lower the branch into the collecting basket uh, and I got the secateurs and cut it off and it all fell into the basket. I got them all. Straightforward. This time the bees had settled on a post and it was a, a post that had chicken wire all around it. So the bees were in the chicken wire and they were up and down the post. So there was no way that I could easily shake them into the collecting basket, the skep. So I got all my suit on and Anna very kindly agreed to film it for me. So I'm going to put the film in here uh, and maybe uh, talk over it so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, I thought that I'd collected them really, really badly because of how they were situated and because I'm a novice. <laughs> But I did my absolute best to collect them and then I shook them into an empty box that I had with a few frames in and just kept my fingers crossed and hoped for the best. Now what I'm trying to do there, the queen bee, now this will have been a new queen, a newly hatched queen, one of the ones that Sue found when we were in the, uh, the hive uh, that Thursday. We found um, three or four uh, either queen cells or, or or hatched out queen cells that's the worst thing because you don't you can't find the queen that's hatched out of there and that was why we did the split hoping that would be some queens in here some queens in here and they'd sort themselves out because your hive only needs one queen anyway the queen gives off it must be a tremendously powerful pheromone that all the bees are attracted to because if you have got the queen in one place all the worker bees will go and find her so I must have got the queen in this box because I went away and I came back in an hour's time. All the bees were in the box. I just tilted the lid ever so slightly and put it down there really quickly because I could see that they were all settled in there. So I left them that night and the next day I gave the bees um, a, a solution of sugar. <clears throat> sugar and water, a kilo of um, sugar, a litre of water, you can do a pound and a pint, it's just one-to-one -one sugar syrup. So I made that up 
and there's a, a way of feeding that to the bees so you don't drown them. So I gave the bees in the swarm that sugar syrup so that they would have um, something to eat and also something to induce them to stay there. So it would be like, oh yeah, we live here now. We don't have to go off and swarm again. Now they may, they may swarm again. If they don't like that box that I put them in for some reason, uh, the scout bees may go out and about and find somewhere different for them to live. But for now, and yesterday, I haven't been down this morning, but yesterday, last night, bees were coming in and out of, of that hive. So if you think about it, last Thursday morning I had one colony and now I have three because we have the split that I made, the swarm that I caught and the original colony, which is amazing. Now, I don't know how successful that will be. This is the joy of beekeeping. You have no idea whether what you're doing is going to actually work or not. I mean, you hope it will, but you're not quite sure. So um, I fed those uh, swarmed bees just to, uh, I, I emailed Sue and said, was this the right thing to do? And she said, well, if they want it, they'll take it. If they don't, they won't. And that's fair enough, isn't it? So we'll see now what goes on. Um, what might happen then is that this box here, which is called a super, I think I explained, and it's got frames, that's an empty one. It's got frames like this in it, which have got honey, uh, which have got beeswax, impressed with the honeycomb pattern on it, commercially available these, and then the bees draw that frame out to be the size they want it to be for the queen to lay eggs in or for them to store honey in, that's simplistically. They also do other things, you know, store nectar and pollen and so on. They're amazing things bees, absolutely love um, the society of bees because it's not for the individual, it's for the collective hive that they do everything, everything they do is for the good of the collective hive, it's very socialist, I like it a lot. Anyway, so uh, I'll put in the, the video now of the um, what happened on Sunday and I took lots of little clips of video and uh, and then I'm going to extract this honey. Now, years and years and years and years ago, when I was a teenager, which is like last millennium, <laughs> I used to help my dad with his bees and uh, extracting the honey was what I was in charge of that. But the two of us would work together and he had an extractor like the one I've got, but it was bigger and it was uh, a plug in electric thing. So yeah. I've got a hand cranked one, which is perfectly fine. What have I got? Five frames, that's all. Um, and I, so I've got a, a very distant memory of how I used to do the cappings. I've got my capping knife somewhere. Where is it? Here. So this is the, the knife that I would use. It's an, like an offset spatula. You see that? Uh, and so using this as an example, which has got nothing in it, the idea is that you just run the knife across there and take all the cappings off the honey and then we'll extract it. We'll do that, I'm going to do that this morning because this is the first time I've extracted honey from my bees. I've had some honey from them that was on a comb without wires in so that we could just cut it out and, and use the and make comb honey. So I did that last year, uh, I, I, so I had some comb honey, but this year I'm going to have some extracted honey that I'll put into little jars. And next week, I'm going to see the person who I bought all these bees from and uh, she still thinks of them as her bees. Well, she says, um, how are my bees doing? She'll say, I've had them for two years. None of them will be the original bees, but she's very proprietorial about them. How are my bees doing? <laughs> so I will tell her that they're doing really well and I'm looking forward to giving her a jar of honey from her bees. OK, watch this bit of film then about me trying to catch this swarm. And the, the, the spoiler alert is that I managed to do it. I actually managed to do it. It doesn't look like I, I have uh, all the time I'm doing it, but I did. Uh, so spoiler alert there. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to extract this honey and make a bit of a video about that unless I really, really mess it up, in which case you won't see any of it. <laughs> So there are the bees then, on the post, in a very, very inconvenient place. You see all the chicken wire that they're all in, among, in amongst. Really annoying. So I've got all suited up, 
and I've got the skep there and I'm going to try and scoop the bees into that skep. I had to just do them like a handful at a time. It was pretty hard because of course they all go mobile as soon as I start doing that. So I'm just telling Anna that's all I can get. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put them over the other side and I'll walk round and get them from the other side. So then what I'm going to do is put a box on the stand and then shape them all into the box and see if they'll stay there. But this is a swarm from the split that we did, Sue and I, the other day. And so they're all right in there, but they can't stay in there for, a long, for too long. They could stay in there for a few hours, but I'll see if I can get the rest of the, bee, of the bees on the post. I walked around to the other side of the fence. All the bees um, that were flying had collected back again on the post. And at this point, I honestly thought that I wasn't gonna manage to get get this swarm because it was so complicated. But this is a small box, it's called a nucleus, and it's only got five or six frames in it, and that's perfect for putting the bees in. Well, I've got to be certain I've got the queen, otherwise I can't put them anywhere. How can you do that? I don't know, I can't know. Hmm. So you hear what I'm doing there. I faced the box the other way so that the bees had come from that turquoise hive wouldn't be interested in going back in it again because it'd be facing backwards. And so I dumped them all in. I've kept the lid the wrong way up, but I sorted that out fairly quickly. So I've extracted uh, a few of these frames now, and this is the last one. But I just wanted to talk to you about it before I, before I put it in the extractor. There's some really interesting things to note about it. So I showed you, didn't I, this one here, which is just, this is just, this is how the bees first encounter a frame. Like the shape is pressed onto that, uh, onto that wax there, and then put into this frame with wires in it so that it, the whole thing doesn't fall apart when I try to put it in the extractor and extract the honey. So the bees come along. I'm just going to make this a bit closer. Okay. So the, the bees come along and they, ex, they the first thing they do is they draw that honeycomb into a cell shape so that this is, uh, it, you can see now it reaches the side of the frame here. And they make that uh, honeycomb into a little cell. There are some worker bees whose job it is to go and polish all those cells when they're extracted out to get them ready for the queen to lay eggs in. So the queen comes along, I'll talk about the queen at another time about how this happens because this is pretty amazing but that's another chat for another day. So the queen comes along then and lays an egg in each one of these cells here and as a beekeeper when I'm looking at a frame of bees like Sue and I did that day I'm looking to see if there are any eggs in there. They're very hard to see. But then as the eggs grow a little bit, they turn into little white C-shaped larva, little grubs, and they're really easy to see. And so if I see those in these cells here, I know that I've got a decent laying queen. And once the, the larva have reached a certain stage, the bees then come along and they cap the cell over with um, whatever substance, the, you know, some wax, a wax capping until 
the bee, the worker bee emerges. Now I've actually got a chart somewhere telling me, I think it's 21 days. Maybe it's not as long as that. But the capped worker bee then emerges and then immediately becomes a part of the hive and starts uh, doing all the jobs in the hive, the cleaning, the foraging, nursing, nurse bees, um, cleaner bees, uh, scout bees, many, many different jobs these bees have, the, the bulk of the workers being foragers and uh, to make honey. So they cut, they, out they go, they find a rich source of, uh, of nectar, uh, collect it, pollen, bring it back, and then they store it in these little cells here. And I wonder if you can see, some of those cells are a bit glisteny. Can you see they're a bit wet? Well, they've got just a little bit of honey in them. But once the honey is filled up to the top of the cell, they cap it over with beeswax. And so all of these cells here are capped honey, waiting for them to need it. It's for them, not for me. <laughs> it's waiting for them to need it to feed young bees and to feed themselves. Now what they're making here is stores for themselves and for the and to store for the winter or bad weather. I mean we've got rain coming up soon and so they need to have uh, stores uh, to keep themselves going when they can't go out and about foraging. They have plenty. When we looked at this on Thursday, Sue and I, she identified these five as ones that I could take out because that's what beekeeping is if you're going to do, do this. You're doing it because you want to make honey or you want the bees to make honey and you want to collect the honey. So these little cappings then, uh, if you, if I was to, I'll get you really close in and I'll show you. So if I was to remove the cap off that one, say, underneath there is beautiful honey, which is what I'm extracting now. So I'm going to take the cappings off this and spin it in the uh, centrifugal uh, honey extractor here. The memory of that has come right back as if I was doing it yesterday. The first thing I, I'd forgotten is just how sticky you get. I mean, I, I'm, my, I've, I've got a damp cloth here, but I'm covered in um, sticky, sticky honey. <laughs> I'd forgotten that. I used to uh, do all my dad's extracting with him. He and I work together. Also, the other thing is I've been doing this now for a few minutes and it's hard work cranking this handle. So I'm grateful that we had a, uh, an electric plug-in extractor because we were doing, you know, 60 colonies of bees. We had a lot of bees and I extracted a lot of honey and I used to spend a whole week there with him extracting honey. So this is nothing. But um, I rem I'm remembering quite a lot now about then when I helped dad do that. And I remember he had an electric uh, knife that was heated so that uh, like my cappings knife there, which is, you know, I've got it in hot water. But it's a little tiny bit of a struggle to get it through the, the, the uh, cappings sometimes. These are called cappings. And I've put the cappings in here. I'll tell you what I'm doing with these in a minute. But uh, Dad's knife was heated and it just used to go through like a knife through butter. This goes through easy enough. So I'm going to take the cappings off this one now and put it in the um, extractor and extract this last frame. And then I'll show you what we've got down there. Don't get too excited. It's not very much. So this is the final stage then. And I don't know if you can see here, but the honey I've extracted only goes up to here. There were only five frames and they were only partially filled. It was a little bit of a luxury really taking them off. If I had a, a huge uh, numbers of boxes of supers to extract, the honey would be right up here somewhere. However, it's not. It hardly even comes to where the, the tap is. <laughs> but we'll give it a try. Now, underneath here then, this bucket here, which also has a little tap on the bottom there. This has a, a sort of a sieve inside it. And in here, these are all the cappings that I took off. And they are slowly going to drip over the course of the next day or so into the uh, bucket here. And then really what should happen next is I should open this tap and honey should pour into here. But I'm fairly certain it's not gonna pour in. I might have to give it some help, but let's give it a try. This is exciting. So I'll get you a little bit closer. 
There we go. This is the settling tank here. This is the honey here. So we open up this. <laughs> and the first last homely house honey of this year will need a little bit of a hand, I think. I'm going to tip it out of the extractor. That's not bad, is it? Now there's some more in the bottom of the tank, a little bit more, it'll need me to scrape it out. But for my first honey of this year, I'm quite pleased with that. So in this tank here then, we've got all these cappings here, and then the honey that was extracted has got all sorts of bits and pieces in it. You know, there might be bits of um, cappings and bits of pollen and so on. Uh, and so what will come out of this sieve here into the bucket below will be much cleaner, clearer honey. So I think I'm a little bit chuffed. I'm also a lot sticky, very sticky indeed. I'm going to um, scrapey, scrapey my big containy into this part here, Katie, and then I'm going to clean this big extractor straight away because it'll be horrible if I come back to it next time and it's really really sticky. Sue advised that I take the workings of it out and put it in the shower and give it a good hose down in the shower so that's what I'm going to do. I'll do that with the extractor part and then I can scrape out the, um, the rest of the container into the sieve. So it's not an enormous amount of honey, it's a little bit more than I thought we would get and that is um, rather marvellous. I'm a bit pleased. Thank you, bees. It turns out that this doesn't come apart. I told you this was the first extraction I'd done. So I am going to do some scrapey scrapey because I really, really don't want to miss any of this liquid gold. So it's lying on its side on the table, and little settling tanks underneath. And I'm covered in uh, honey anyway, so I'm going to get in there and get it all out. Because there's probably half a pound of honey up there. Yeah. I'm just scraping the, the cappings that have settled on the bottom of the sieve so that the liquid honey can get through more easily. So what I do with these cappings now, and with the, um, <coughs> sit on the floor. So what I do with these cappings and with the empty frames, I actually put them back on top of a beehive in a, uh, an empty one of these boxes, and the bees will clean it all up. They'll take back the honey that's still clinging to the, the cappings and the frames. They will clean the frames up and they will use them again. And so the, the bees are, well, they're a little short of magnificent, really. Now, I am as sticky as I remember being when I was 15. There's probably a tablespoon left in there. I think we might sacrifice that. And... There's honey all over the camera as well. <laughs> Everything's going to get a big clean up now. 